Hi, you guys. This is Joanna, my space in your place. I'm glad to be here this evening. Hope you all are keeping safe and wearing your mask. I want to um, bring you, uh, first of all, could you go ahead and uh, like and subscribe my videos? That way you will not miss another video when I upload. I have uh, information, uh, I'm informative, I give personal stories that are real, that could affect your, your life and help. Um, I do this because I love you. I sincerely love people in general. And I want to see the best for everybody to do well, to reach goals, to be happy. And like I say, my heart goes out to ladies. Yes, especially ladies, because I am a lady. Okay, you know I did the story on... Um, um, the kidnap and murder-suicide survivor. Here's the deal. I did part one and part two, and I left out on part two where um, I was at my sister's house and I had gotten that for. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna um start from there. But before I do that, for the people that just maybe want to just hear what part three, part two, if they miss one and two, this is just a rough summary of what you missed. I am a survivor of a murder-suicide attempt, a planned murder on my life by my husband husband, late husband. And with God's grace, as you see, I am not deceased, but he is. Um, and it happened in 1987. This is when it all happened. Uh, it went from one scenario to another scenario, which was part two. And I left at that scenario where I did get in the car with him, not realizing that I was going to be kidnapped. That was his plan then to kidnap me. So subscribe to the channel. Like and subscribe. Go back and see one and two. And then you catch up to where I am going to start now. Because I don't want you to miss anything. But I, I, I want to warn you though. If you go in Messenger and Joanna Woodbury. Joanna Woodbury. And you DM me. And you want the story on a... um. You want a, a rough copy of the story. I do not have a book written. I am not a publisher of a book. I have memoirs. And um, I have one called The Bastard Child Raised by the Unknown To Death Do Us Part. Raised Behind Bars. Uh, Mama Did That. The Move to the Last Frontier. Being Black in Alaska. Seven Days Tribulation. Heartache, Heartbreak. The Lost of a Child. So, I have memoirs, and I write memoirs. I have no idea how to write a book. I have no idea how to go about it. In years, I have tried everything, and people have contacted me, ghost writers, and say, you want to write a book? I am not financially able to write a book. 
But you know what? I am blessed because I could tell things. And I could, it will always, as long as they run YouTube, my grandchildren could see what I say. And that's what it matters to me. But if you would like a copy of a memoir, when I tell this story, you want to just keep it for your record. Your record, I will sign it. If you DM me, and I would send it to you. They are only ten dollars. Yes, per per memoir, only ten dollars, and uh, you will get a memoir. And in my in my um description box, I have my cash app. Um, that's what you can send it. You can DM me and say you want it, and then then I know that you want it, and then it will get to you, you know. And so anyway, that's how that that's how that is. And so this is part three of I Survive Kidnapping and a Murder Suicide Attempt. For those who don't know me, I am Joanna. And my story my, my show tell stories that are informative, that are real, and I pray to God they change someone and help somebody save their life because I tell things about abuse that you wouldn't believe. So go back and, and look at my 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 uh, my channel. Yeah, yeah, my shows and uh catch up. Because, honey, there are more to come. You have no idea that demon of abuse. It come in all faith. And I plan, before I leave this earth, to uncover, do you hear me, for these ladies. Yes, I have been given this platform to help you, and I plan to do it before I leave this earth. That is my my, my duty to women of all colors, nationality, I will sound the trumpet for you girls. And I will let you know what to do, how to get help. DM me. Tell me. I'm private. You can tell me anything. Okay? Yes. Yes, you can DM me. In Messenger, you can ask questions. I could, I could get help you out. I am. I know this for a fact, and I didn't go to college for this. What well, psychology? But I'm talking about. I lived it. I know it. I'm around it. I see it every day in certain places. I am just sick of it. And during the pandemic, when everybody is shut up in the houses and the children are all there and all this chaos, honey, you need to listen to this. More now than ever, I'm telling you, in the name of Jesus, if this is one video, this woman here, that you look at me, look at my face, remember me when I scroll around, subscribe, like this channel, and you will be informed when I come and I upload a video. You don't want to miss it, honey. Okay, we're going to start with when I... Got in the car from the house in my town to drive with him with my child. Now, you got to go back and look at all this. I'm not going back through that. So, I'm in the car. So, we got to the destination. Here's where I left off. And he, I was all happy, remember? Saying, oh, wow, you know, I, I, I'm so happy that I'm here. Um. I'm like saved because I'm going to go to my sister's house and I'm going to see my baby. I had a daughter that was there. That's in other parts. You'll read about that. So anyway, so then I'm getting out and I went to grab for my baby. And like I said, he said, uh-uh, you, you going on up there. And um, he wanted to see my daughter. And so that's what I did. 
So, I, like I said, I thought I was free. And then, lo and behold, when, when I went upstairs, uh, my baby was, I was so good. Like I said, you call all your children, they're your babies. <laughs> all children are your babies. And so, my baby had the prettiest smile when she saw mommy. You know, and I go, oh, I was so happy. You know, that she was, that I could see my child. And then my sister, and I could briefly tell my sister what was happening. And so I told about, you know, in part one and two, I told her all about that. And so she was going like, oh, man. She said, um, well, what, what, what is he? He bought you here. What you going to do? Go back with him? But she said, no, you can't go back with him. And then so... After a while, he jumped at like I swear I stopped that way. He screamed my name. Like I told you, the most of you know my nickname is Judy. Screaming, Judy. Uh, do you want your baby? And, and I said, yes, I want my baby. I went like, oh, praise the Lord to myself. <laughs> yes, I want my baby. And he said, Come on, come on, get the baby. So my sister, she really did not believe that. She didn't she feared for me to even go back down the stairs, and so did my daughter. She was at nine, gonna be like I said, gonna be ten in December, but something about that they both didn't she didn't want me to go. My sister didn't want me to go, my daughter didn't, but my baby was downstairs. Let me tell you, you want all your children. Yeah, you want all of them. Not to leave one. Uh-uh. So when I went downstairs to negotiate with a deranged person that had lost it, that was at the end of his rope, had nothing to lose, had a made-up mind, and I was the victim. So I went down to see why he was screaming my name. And when I got there, he said, do you want your baby? And I said, yes, I want my baby. He said, well, I'll tell you what, I'll give you your baby if you come to me. Uh, you go with me. I let your baby go upstairs with your aunt, you know, with your my sister-in-law and my baby, your, your daughter. And you come just come go with me and ride with me and um Yeah, ride with me and just let's talk. Okay, I I'm not gonna say I fell for that trick or whatever. But I did, but I knew it was something, but at this point, my children were safe, and I, I at least I wanted to go see what was going on. This man took me way out there by Disney World. That was before Disney World was really like it is now, and. They had apartments, new apartments out there. And I really didn't know he had a friend out there by Disney World. And um, he, um, you know, I started, like, being nice because um, I had to work. I had to be nice. I had to, like, work on him, his mental state. Remember when I told you when your head in the lion's mouth, don't snatch it out. You got to ease your way out of this when you have found yourself in a situation with someone that you recognize that they're deranged and something is going to happen from that intuition. Yes, women have that. People have this. Some of them use it, some don't. I talked about it in my other shows, that little voice. But I was trying to figure out what I was going to do. How was I going to escape? My mind was running a million miles a minute. I didn't know. Now, here's the deal. Um, 
if you go back over the part two, remember I was telling you about the lady that I had told when the police came and, uh, and ran them away? Well, um, that late, uh, uh, I went. I, I, I left something out in part two. Remember when I told you I called that lady? Well, when the police uh, made him get, I did uh, 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 go back to work. I, I did. I went back to work after the police got rid of him. I woke us up that month. Wait a minute. Let me go back. Let me go back. Let me just start from that. When I got in the car with him at Disney World, um, I had called. Um, uh, he called me on my um, cell phone. And the lady that called the police on, on him because I didn't show up to work. He made me call her in the woods with a gun. This woman had called him the N word. She was a white lady. And he, now, I told you that my husband was a black a racist. He, she called him everything but the child of God because um, they did not like the way um, he treated me. So she was frustrated. She was angry. And, um, but what she did was she wasn't recognizing what I was saying. When I was asking her, I say, was I standing right there when you called him, uh, the end word? Did I hear you say any of that? Now, this woman should have known that if I was asking her questions that I knew for a fact that I was there with her, looked like something should have clicked in her head and say, why is she asking me, did I, was she there, darling? It didn't match with her. I mean, it did not, she went home, told her husband, the one that I say at the, her husband was a racist, but he was white, yes. She told her husband what I did. That I call her from somewhere that night. That's what it was. I, I was with him that night, and I, he made me call her because he was degraded by her. So all that was in him too. He was really upset about when the, calling the police on him and all of that. So he was very upset about it and. Uh, he, he wanted to know just, I just want to know where you standing with this woman, why she called me inward and this and that and everything. He had a gun. And he told me when she say, are you, uh, are you been drinking? Now she, she know that I, I didn't do that. And her husband, when she hung up the phone, she I guess she shared the conversation with her husband. And he say, you have messed up, honey. That man have that woman somewhere. And he made her ask you them questions. Yeah. She said, oh, my God. No one knew where I was because when I left my sister's house, he just told me, we're going to ride around the block. He said, we're going to ride around the block and just talk. But when I got in that car, he took off like, Ugh! yes, he took off on two wheels. My sister called the police. But they had no idea what back in the day, they had no GPS on phones, none of that. This was in 1987. So they didn't have this, they had no idea where this man had taken me. So I was actually kidnapped. And when he um, talked to the girl, he heard the girl, and he, when I lied to him and say, I was not there. I don't know what you're talking about. I, I didn't know he was going to make me call her. So and then she said I did. And so he, he pulled the gun out. 
and he said that uh, he was going to do it then because it was out way out in the woods. Nobody knew where we were. You know, I begged for my life, but in a sexual way. Yes. Because, number one, I knew that my husband and his sick sickness, he loved me. I, I did knew, know that, even though he harmed me. But I knew that uh, nobody else could hurt me. He could, but, you know. So I used everything that I possibly could, and I kept my voice at a minimum, and I told him that I was sorry that I lied, all of this. I just, just was timid as possible and submissive. I, I just went along with everything he said, and then I told him, um, don't kill me in the woods because nobody would find us. And then, if nobody finds us, then um, that would be terrible. Oh, I, I just come up with all kinds of stuff to try to calm him down. And I, I think I even rubbed on him and say, uh, I think I did say, L -l let's get out of these woods and and leave the children over there, and we go back home with you and I, and let's make love, and let's talk about this. I knew what I was doing, because that was it. I had to get him back to that where I lived, because all point bulletins was out on him there. I had to get him back to that county where... The points, all point bulletin was out on him in both counties. But I knew that if I got him to that county and at my house, I stood a better chance. So now by this time, I was missing in another county. But my children were safe. Okay? All my children were safe. But my sister was a wreck. She didn't know where her sister was. I wasn't allowed to call. I couldn't tell nobody where I was or nothing. But I didn't show up for work. And I already knew if I didn't show up for work, like I said in part two, all hell was going to break loose because I had alerted all my coworkers on it. They know I was an early bird. I never went nowhere late or running to get in somewhere late. I was always a punctual person. And I pride myself in being punctual and on time person, like independable. Well, they know I be sitting there when they come in, running, half of them. I'm there reading, you know. Um, uh, but you, clock, you can't clock in but 15 minutes, you know, before time. And, but I would be there just waiting. But I had already told and alerted this woman if I didn't show up to work to call the police. That was just a known fact that I did that. And I, I knew that when I didn't show up to work, that's why I had to get in my house so they would come there in the county around my job. I even told him that. You know, let me go back. I said, then I'll call in for work and we'll spend the day together. We'll cook and all this stuff. So that kind of changed his mind. Yes. That, you know, that kind of changed his mind a little bit. So, uh, anyway, um, we we did do husband and wife things when we got we did and we made it there like ooh it had to be like three a.m. you know like that time four day morning and it was uh cold it had gotten cold it was um like the second of November. Yeah. And so 
when I didn't show up. Um, she, she didn't call the police. She came herself. Yeah, she came herself because I don't know. She said she was she had got angry and she wanted to kill him or something like that. I don't know. She was so mad. She said I was ready for him. I, you know because of what he had done to me in the woods and she it was the causing of me. She thought I was dead. It just scared her and uh, so she showed up to my house um, like seven thirty and she she was just sitting there and I think he must have heard she had a big one of those big uh. Uh, trucks, and he heard the truck, you know, the motor, and he peeped out the window, and he said, was somebody supposed to come pick you up from her? I said, who out there? She said, he said, Lucy, what's she doing here after all that last night? He said, you know, I guess he ought to go out there and say something. I said, no, don't say nothing. Now. This enough is enough. I said, I'm going to tell Lucy that I am staying in today. Knowing that that was not what I was going to tell that woman. I said, let me go down here and tell her to go. To go and make up something for my boss. I said, so we can spend the day together. Honey, Lucy went down. I went down the stairs with Lucy. He shouldn't have never let me do that. You know what? See, when you when you have... Uh, PTSD, promoted stress syndrome, you tend to forget stuff. And I knew that if I take my time, I was going to rush you part one, part two. No, you can't do that with something as drastic as that. So see, more coming to me? No, no. She came herself. She couldn't wait. She didn't want to take the chance. She knew she had messed up when I was in the woods. And she wasn't take. So... When I, when she was blowing the horn and say, you told me to pick you up for work, she had twisted it. You know, that was even better. So, and I said, let me go get rid of her. So then when I got there, she said, get in this truck right now. That's what she said. And I said, but, she said, I said, but my purse. She said, and get in here right now. Um, and I did. I got, I got, I, he was peeping out the window. So when he saw me crawl up in that big old truck, I guess he say, uh-oh, let me get up. So he got up, we, we, we left, and she took off. She took off with me. And um, we didn't go to the, um, to the job. I, I couldn't work that day. Um, I think I went to the, did I go to the police station? I can't remember, y'all, my mind is blocked. But that's why it's in my memoirs. But I'm going to tell you with my mouth, but, it, you know, blocks come up from that because it was, it was such a bad uh, thing. But I do remember, um, going back to um to my oh she took me to to uh where my sister and my baby was yeah that's what we did and the people on the job paid me and they paid her yeah and then we went and um that way uh I had put out that you know make sure that he didn't come back but Anyway, things happen, and on the one that I call uh, seven day tribulation is the reason why the the reason why the name seven day tribulation I gave it that because it was like seven days of hell. It was like seven days of him coming back to me, let him running, me being you know. Naive, taking it back, doing it was like seven days before the actual um, self murder, the suicide and the suicide attempt. 
Um, I'm going to skip on to uh, the actual night. And the rest of it is in the, um, you know what I'm saying. And um, DM me and you can get, you know, the whole story. But I'm going to fast forward and uh, this is going to be it, part three. Uh, it He did uh, come and there was, um, uh, I, I pleaded with him. I'm not going to tell you how. You can read about it. But I managed uh, to get him to to throw the bullets away and he had done something that you wouldn't believe yes and then um i i blocked managed to block that i managed to save myself i got nicked in a artery because i jumped down two flight two two stories onto the ground i didn't break a bone but i just nicked the artery they thought I was bleeding from a bullet wound, but I wasn't. And a lot of stuff happened that night. I fought for my life. Uh, I got away. He caught me. He was naked, uh, but he got dressed outside. He just wanted to see where I was running. He found me. And, um, and then the rest is history. Then you can uh, DM me, and the, mur the, the suicide took place. And I didn't die, and I could tell you all the rest in the uh, memoir. But that is the part three of it. Uh, I am a survivor. I did not get nothing but a scratch. That was because I jumped down two stories and landed on my feet. Um, and I am here today. And all of that, ladies, I want to I wanna round this up. Anybody that's listening to this, because if you got a daughter, you know, a niece or whatever, a sister, listen to this, what I'm saying. Um, finally, um, oh, yeah. I'm telling you, that's something else. And then you run the risk. I'm telling you, the family, when something like that, their family, they they think you beat and killed them or something. They just want to, when it's suicide, they just can't believe that their loved one did such a thing. But they should, if they kept from me, that uh, what which I found out that so much was uncovered after his death. You know, that he had been married before. And he his first wife vanished off the face of the earth from him. And somebody should have warned me of this. Nobody did. They was happy that he had a good wife and all of this. And she saved and she could change. No, I could not change him. He did me the same way everybody I just last longer because I was saved and I was taught to skip each other. But that soon disappeared when I had enough. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. So, that's in my memoir, um, Seven Days Tribulation. Okay, you guys? So, that is part three. And um, you could um, follow me on Instagram. And Twitter, Facebook. Also, I am on Qura, Q U O R A. I have a, um, a space, I'm an administrator on their platform called Nappy Head Just Want to Talk Sometime without the E on the end. And that is also my link. Dot com if you want to track me down. And so I tried to do it because, you know, that is my domain. And they was, they was supposed to hook it together. And seem like it say it just don't want to pull it up in Bing. Or, I didn't Google it, but Bing or whatever drive, you're supposed to be able to pull it up on what I said. Nap it. Just want to talk sometime. That is my link dot com. Joanna Woodbury, if you don't remember that. And I know for a fact you can find me in YouTube under My Space in Your Place. I give 
informative, helpful messages. I tell real stories that I am an expert in because it happened to me. I can tell you verbatim about an uh, uh, abuser. DM me. Men are women. Okay? Look me up on Messenger in Joanna Woodbury. If you have never done this before, subscribe to my video. Like, okay? Tell somebody about me. I am going to be, you know what I talked to my girlfriend, my sister in Christ? And I had been like toying and troubling with my channel. I, I, Lord, I don't know what is it. What am I? I don't even feel like I'm useful. Because I noticed that if you're not talking trash or dragging somebody, nobody even want to subscribe to your channel. You're not interested in You know what the Spirit said to me? That you're not there for that. The world, you got a message for people. And it may not be for everybody, but you're going to tell it. It's not, you know, I, I subscribe, like, because that's just something that you say you do. I really would like for you to be alerted when I come on or uh, upload a video, whether it be if I go live on Facebook or YouTube or uh, Instagram or wherever I am, uh, Kiora, if I'm over there, you can go to my ch my, my space. Uh, it's called Naphead, just want to talk sometime in Kiora and look at my uh, my space there. It's very interesting. I have some of everything on there. I have like seven spaces that I take care of. And so I, I share the things on the say I don't um, uh, approve everybody that come at me. All the creators, there's so many. Uh, everybody have their own story to tell. And I realize that. And there's so much information out there for people to uh, talk about. I realize that. But, you know, when you start feeling some kind of way... I, I had to get away from that, and I'm just going to tell my stories, and because I don't want to uh, do it to you, because I'm feeling some kind of way, because nobody wants to subscribe to me. That is not what I came to do. I I got a job to do for you. Yeah, I got I got to tell you, and and that was shutting me up because I'm looking at somebody else, you know, in the world and saying, is, is that what I got to do? Talk about people and run them and, and drag them through the mud to get. That is not what I do. If you follow me way back when I first started, even on, on Facebook, I say if that is what it takes to get a like or share whatever, then you don't have to do that. Because I would not lose my character. Now here on Faith on YouTube, I'm the same thing still goes. I am going to be informative. I am going to try to give you information to change your life, turn you around, educate you, save your life. And so you, your grandchildren, your granddaughter, your mother. Yes, I have been getting information, you guys. This, the reason why I came to do part three of this and to tell you if you want to hear everything, DM me. I have, will put the cash app uh, name in the description uh, part where you could um, DM me and tell me that you want it. I get it ready. When it's ready, I dim you back. It's ready. Okay? And then you put that the $10 in there for me to ship this stuff to. I live in Alaska, honey. I live in Alaska. So it's $10 for this the transcript. But then you have to pay your own shipping and handling and stuff like that. I cannot afford that. 
All right? So that's how that goes. I would love to have you to purchase one of my memoirs. That's up to you. Uh, God is good, and he blessed me all kind of ways because I come to help you and your daughters, your sisters, your mothers, your nieces. Oh, yes, I am here. I have arrived, honey. I am, they call me the boomer. Yes, I am a baby boomer, and I come with a vengeance. Yes, we're going to try to stop these abusing people in their tracks. I'm going to be coming to you more now. I'm not going to leave you alone. I'm not going to stay away like that because I'm trying to figure I got something to say every day. And I'm going to try my best to tell you, oh, yeah, and good news. I have um a person uh, um that is coming from Fairbanks, Alaska. To, you know, I told you that words, me and words, sometimes my mind just sometimes it go away. I call it a senior moment. I don't even try to go back there and remember the word because it'll come to me when I'm in the bed and you off the video. And then I say, oh, that's what it was. I, I, I don't know. You know what I'm saying, what I'm trying to say. The person that helped you get a business started and know everything how to do and what to do. He's coming to help me out. He owned a production company in Fairbanks, Alaska. He's leaving the state, going to California. He is coming to like, because my production company is called Nappy Head Production Company in Alaska, in Anchorage. He's in Fairbanks. He worked and did Sarah Palin stuff, and 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 I. Added equipment to my uh, production company. We just purchased a new drone. And we've been doing some videos. I, I did not tell you that I was going to bring you more than this face right here. And uh, and I've been working on it. Yes, I have. Oh, you let me tell you something, honey. You're going to see something. You are going to see something. I'm going to let it be a surprise. Because... It's a lot of stuff go on, but you going to see it. Yes, you going to see a lot of stuff that have not been shown. Matter of fact, I haven't seen nobody showing it, but you going to see some stuff. Yes, you are. Yeah, um, but anyway... Um, because everything that shine is not gold. And don't you be fooled that it is. And there's so much in this world, you guys. You know what I'm saying? And aren't you tired of that uh, simp stimulus man? The one with the lip. You know, he's a good fellow. Nice guy. Got a beautiful family and a handsome little son. Pretty wife, everything. But... Brother, come on. Aren't you tired of giving disappointing news? Well, we all know that this stimulus, if it comes, it comes. We know this. And we all know that we are struggling. The country know that. You know, but God see it all, you people. So just hold on. I told you, save your money. Don't, 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 don't be frivolous out there spinning, spinning, spinning. No, to do. save your money. If you get hold to some money, like a lump, pay off stuff like, like you owe something that you can buy those telephones or you got a little loan that you maybe owe $4,000 on and you, you got enough, pay that off. Because you won't have to pay the bills. You won't pay those. You know what I'm saying? You, you got to start using your head, people. Use the strategy. This, they got a big boy club out there. And I'm afraid of you looking at this. You are not one of them. If you waiting on a stimulus check, you just like me. Plain Joe, okay? 
Yes, you're plain. You're not rich, you know, so um, they all in it. They, the money comes in, do you get it? See it? No, they dangle money in front of you. That's what they do. We'll give it to you if they're like that, honey. Use your head. I'm going to get back with you guys, but that was part three of my video. And I love you guys on this evening. And I'm going to come back at you, okay? I love you all. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and subscribe to my channel. Tell a friend because I'm going to come at you and come at you hard. And when it, like, come around December and every day, you're going to see a new uh, 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 show like. Because um, things going to be, I have a consultant, that's the name, coming from Fairbanks, Alaska this month. That's going to get my studio up and running. Finally, you know what I'm saying? Then I can bring you things that I wanted to share with you all along. Yes, I love you all so much. And believe me, I think about you guys. I think about you so much. Let me tell you. I was just laying around, just, uh, you know, chilling all day today. And I, I say, you know what? Let me get up and finish the uh, part three of this show and get it over and out of the way. If they want to know what happened at the end, because I'm alive, you see, I did not die. I'm a survivor of so much, and I mean to bring it to you, and I'm going to give it to you raw. I'm going to tell you things to do. I'm going to show you stuff that's been, that they don't want seen or what's going on, you know, uh, uh, here in Alaska, stuff like um, how we live. You know, y'all think we rich. That's a lie. No, no, no. It's so much, honey. This is a big boys club here. Yeah, it's like a pile of people getting all the money. And we don't even vote for the laws. Don't look like next thing you know, it's a law. You know what I'm saying? They, when they run, it's like a group. It's a club. But God is unveiling all the dirt that's do it dead in the corners, even in the newsroom, honey. I got some for you. And I'm talking about real talk. Yes, real stuff that that's in the nation news. I'm not talking about Facebook celebrity gossip. No, no, no. I'm talking about broadcasting news. I'm bringing to you. And I'm bringing you facts about how you defend yourself and what to do and stuff. And giving you a chance to DM me and go into my messenger and you tell me, ask me things. Tell me what's going on. Yes, I want to be your friend. There was a reason and a purpose for me having this show. And I'm here for you guys. I'll be here. I'm here and I look at and I read. It's a personal thing. I'm a one-man show. I have nobody running my, doing my makeup, doing my hair, doing my lighting, doing my wardrobe, doing my shopping, doing my Facebooks or whatever. I'm it. You're looking at it. I'm it. Yes. With the help of God, I'm it. I even read and studied up how to come to you this far. I did that. Nobody taught me nothing. No one showed me anything. I read up because I had a burning desire not to bring gossip or tear somebody down. I come to build you up, to alert you, to give you information for life-saving tactics. For women as well as men, your sisters, your mamas, everybody that need to hear, you need to subscribe my channel. This is it. This is it. We're, we're, we're out now, okay? I, this, the plan is over. All of that, if you go back and look at all my, my videos, you'll see how I have grown over the 
since uh, uh, I guess um, I start shooting videos. All right, I am comfortable with the camera. I'm comfortable with myself, inside and out. I, everything is all right with me. Okay, and I have gotten to go ahead from friends and the Holy Spirit that what my purpose because I really didn't know why was I doing this to help you. I I genuinely I don't see color, so don't think oh this is a black woman she doing the, don't dare think that. If you in trouble in Walmart just the other day. I saw a woman being abused by a man, and they, they wasn't, didn't look like me. This is what I do shows on. Do you know how I felt? I looked that woman in her eyes, and I gave her the look like, you are not all right. You are being abused. It, it, it really hurt me to the core. I feel, and I love you dearly. I love human beings, mankind. I hate wrong. I do. Just like God, with a passion. I can see it a mile away. Lies, deceit, under all of that. But that ain't why I'm coming to you. I'm coming because of this. What I have to tell you, I'm going to tell you to help you to improve your life, to make you happy, to bring some happiness. Life is too short. Life is too short. So here I go, and uh, I love you. God bless. You have a wonderful evening. And um, don't forget to DM me. Look, Joanna Woodbury, Facebook. DM me, whatever. Leave me a message, okay? And um, I will get back with you. You can get my, my manuscripts and uh, cash uh, app. is on the uh, description. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and share and tell a friend. I love you and enjoy your weekend. Uh, my space in your place. Thank you for having me this evening. Bye-bye.